actually from Menlo Park originally. I grew up in Menlo Park and I took classes at Pal as a high schooler. Uh, so I'm really excited to be teaching there now. I went to the new school for undergrad. So I have a degree in art history and another degree in fine arts. And then I went to MICA, which is here in Baltimore, where I live now for my master's education. Uh, so I have a master's in studio art now, and I teach at MICA, and I also teach at Johns Hopkins. My work is primarily a study of the mid-century, uh, and I'm interested in what the world used to be like. And also, I think of the mid-century as the last optimistic time um, for America. And, you know, all of our ideas about what America deserves and American exceptionalism are really interesting to me. Uh, so my work is mostly themed around that. I tend to work in series, so I will work with institutions um, to use their archives and spend some time learning about history and then making um, art that sort of responds to first person documentation or accounts. Mm -hmm. So this is Levittown, Puerto Rico, which is a planned housing community that was founded in 1969 by the Levitt brothers who also built um, housing communities in New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Uh, the one in Puerto Rico is considered the best preserved, meaning that it's closest to the original model. What's notable about it to me, what made it exciting to paint, are all the vibrant colors and um, how people personalize these homes like just a little bit. Um, some of these pieces have elements of collage on top of traditional watercolor. But yeah, this was a two-year project that culminated in a show in DC that just closed in March. That's the one where the, the sculpture was. Water media, a lot of people have experience with it from childhood and they come into it thinking, you know, I just need a brush and some water and some paint and I, you know, stick one in the other and we're good to go. Uh, but I try to push people to try using the tools in new ways. So. You know, in my classes, we use a variety of brushes. We use a variety of um, household stuff, you know, like salt and sugar and paper towels. And it's really incredible the effects you can get with stuff you just have around the house. It makes it, you know, more dynamic. Uh, you could do a lot with watercolor and gouache, but it's really important to me to understand where the student's coming from and what they're trying to do. So it's goal oriented for the individual. I give pretty open-ended projects because I think part of being an artist is, you know, finding your own voice and your own interests. So I'm not here to say we all have to paint the same flower. Um, I don't know how helpful that is in this day and age. So I leave it more open. Um, and I just try to let the student tell me what they want to learn. And then we go from there. <laughs>